Now, from Central Oregon's news leader, News Channel 21 at 6 continues. The Christmas market where 12 people died and a truck rampage reopened today in Berlin. This is more details emerge about the suspect at the center of an international manhunt. Welcome back. I'm Danny Freed. And I'm Lee Anderson. The German Christmas market where 12 people died and a truck rampage reopened today. But the manhunt for the suspected attacker is still underway. Matt Bradley has the latest from Berlin, Germany. You know, the latest information we have from a series of press conferences this afternoon is that German prosecutors are more certain than ever that Anas Umri, that 24-year-old Tunisian, was indeed the man who perpetrated that grisly attack 72 hours ago on this Christmas market around me. If you can imagine a huge tractor trailer barging through this crowded market. Now, the reason why is because not only did they find his identification papers near or inside the truck itself, they actually found his fingerprints in the cab of the truck, and that goes a long way toward placing Ennis at the crime scene. Now, this manhunt for Ennis has sprawled out to cover the entire continent. Police are looking in hospitals, they're looking in homes, they're looking in refugee camps for any information, and now there's a $100,000 bounty on his head. But I just want to show you a little bit of what we're seeing here at this market. As I said, it's been 72 hours since this attack killed 12 people here. Now, you look around, all the lights are up, people are snacking, they're drinking Glowvine, which is mulled wine, and people are coming, but they're not actually having the same kind of Christmas spirit they normally would. The music isn't here, they've turned that off, so it's actually very solemn and very quiet. And if you can see behind me, there's this sprawling memorial to the 12 people who died. People have been coming here for the last several days, laying down flowers and candles, little devotional images and signs. You can't see, but one of these signs says, Ich bin ein Berliner, that famous quote from John F. Kennedy during the Cold War in this city. So folks here, they're really trying their best to feel Christmassy, to eke out some sort of Christmas amidst all this tragedy. Back to you. There are reports of an armed robbery at Market of Choice just before nine o'clock last night. Then police say a man was shoplifting from the store. They say he pulled a knife when security approached him. The suspect was identified as Bend resident Derek Chamberlain. After running away, he was found at his house and taken into custody. He faces several charges, including robbery and theft. And we're tonight of the arrest of three South Deschutes County teens in last week's robbery of the South Bend 7-Eleven. Police say two people wearing masks entered the store, one carrying a gun. They ordered the clerk to give them the money in the cash register. 19-year-old Joseph Powell was arrested yesterday. 19-year-old Alec Jones and a 16-year-old boy were arrested today. Powell is being held on a $100,000 bail. Police thanked the community for tips that led to that arrest. Another robbery took place at Abby's Pizza in Redmond. The lone suspect entered the store at 10 p.m. wearing a mask and carrying a handgun. He then demanded money from the safe and then fled the scene. He remains at large. A two-story house in Powell Buttes completely lost after a fire this morning. The fire broke out around 1.30 a.m. on Riggs Road. Two other structures caught fire but are salvageable. Crick County firefighters are still determining the cause of the fire. The homeowners are out of town. No one was inside. The fire department's reminding people who are leaving for the holiday weekend to check your pipes and heaters before leaving. In the cold weather especially, and I know everyone's worried about their pipes freezing, but really having a good strategy on how to keep those pipes thawed. Be sure and make sure your Christmas lights are plugged in correctly and won't cause any extra heat, which could spark a fire. Turning to your forecast now, snow is on its way to the high desert. Emily Kirk says an advisory is in place for our area in the Cascade. She joins us now with a look ahead. Emily. Danny, that's right. Temperatures are uh, cool right now, and that winter weather advisory takes effect overnight tonight. We did peak in the upper 30s for daytime highs. Now we're sitting in the mid-20s in Redmond, upper 20s in Bend, and into the mid-20s down towards the south, hanging on to 29 for both Warm Springs and Madras. So yes, that winter weather advisory to talk about. It takes effect at midnight tonight for the high desert and extends until 10 o'clock tomorrow night. That's Central Oregon and east of the Cascades. West of the Cascades, on the western slopes at least, you can see from Lane County up towards the north, uh, that extends until the afternoon tomorrow. So ours is a little bit later than that as showers will continue to move off towards the east. And then down towards the south, that's a winter storm warning. So if you're heading that way, keep that in mind for Willamette Pass especially. 
So for this evening, increasing cloud cover. Temperatures will be in the upper 20s around 7 o'clock. Rain snow mix by midnight tonight. That means we're waking up to snow on the high desert. I've got a look ahead coming up in just a few minutes. For now, we'll send it back to you. Representative Newt Bueller has been removed from an Oregon Housing Committee. Now Republicans say Bueller was removed because his policies don't match the rest of the committee. News Channel 21 spoke with Bueller on the phone today. He expressed his frustration with his removal and disagreements with the committee's chairwoman, Representative Alyssa Keeney Geyer. Bueller said the housing crisis cannot be solved by artificially manipulating the market. Instead, Bueller believes city planning and expansion can increase the housing supply to meet demand. A controversial vote at the United Nations to stop Israel's West Bank settlement has been postponed as the president-elect took to Twitter demanding it be halted. The White House had planned to abstain from the vote, but one month before he takes over the White House, Mr. Trump stepped in. Jennifer Johnson has the latest from Capitol Hill. President-elect Donald Trump stepped into an international showdown today as Egypt postponed a vote on a U.N. resolution declaring Israel's settlements in Palestinian areas a violation of international law. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu demanded the U.S. veto the resolution. That prompted President-elect Donald Trump to tweet and post on Facebook. Peace between the Israelis and Palestinians will only come through direct negotiations and not through the imposition of terms by the United Nations. An unusual step for a man not yet in the White House. We have one president at a time, and that's quite important, but I don't think we're going to stop Mr. Trump from tweeting out or speaking out, and I think President Obama has taken that into account. The U.S. has long opposed Israel's West Bank settlement construction. Now some question whether Trump will reverse that. That would be, in my judgment, a serious mistake and a setback toward efforts to achieve peace in the region. The president-elect got into another diplomatic dance today after tweeting, the United States must greatly strengthen and expand its nuclear capability until such time as the world comes to its senses regarding nukes. That came after Russian President Vladimir Putin called on his country to boost its nuclear power. Today, Mr. Trump also worked on his White House team, naming familiar face Kellyanne Conway as counselor to the president. Jennifer Johnson, NBC News, Washington. A JetBlue passenger claims he was kicked off his flight because of Ivanka Trump. The daughter of the president-elect and her family were on the commercial flight leaving from New York's JFK this morning. That's when a man boarding the plane confronted Ivanka, according to a tweet from the man's husband. JetBlue stepped in and forced the man to take a different flight. Still to come, Chris Kringle is headed to the clink after robbing a bank. Details ahead. Plus, we already have snow on the ground in Central Oregon, but more is on the way. We're talking a light Christmas. We'll time that out coming up after the break.